Avinash, hi, and thank you for being here today in today's Pleasure conference. I know tomorrow you have a speech as well, so we're yes, super too. excited for that. A uh, moderator for the panel and a speech. How amazing. <laughs> Tell us, how is your experience today? Are you enjoying it? How is it different than other uh, conferences for, in cybersecurity? Excellent. It's been a great show, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, Mina ISC is always recognized to be that, you know, thought leadership, cybersecurity focused session that is customer centric and, you know, it, it's great to be here because we've been, our stand has been bombarded with customers all day, very interested to learn about what we uh, go to market with, which is zero trust security. Um, and uh, zero trust security is a very trending but important topic in today's day and age. Uh, a lot of customers in the kingdom and around the world are really focused on digital transformation, remote working, cloud adoption, and zero trust security as a concept was built to address these business drivers and challenges. So it's been a great show. I mean, um, when you're, you know, Mina IC for the last 10 years has been really catering to that, that cybersecurity focused audience. And so, you know, you won't find consumers here, you won't find students here. And it's just that focused security leader that comes to Mina ISC. And that's our audience, that's our, that's our customer base. So uh, it's always good to be, you know, where you're, uh, you know, directly talking to the people that uh, are, you're advising and educating and creating awareness and evangelizing to. Uh, some of the other events are great, don't get me wrong, around the region. Um, but you know, their, their focus may be a little bit broader, right? You have a different kind of audience and profile of people coming uh, that is more general or more generic. Here it's very focused around cyber and the right caliber and seniority of, of, of security decision maker. So it's been a great show. Amazing. You just mentioned the zero trust approach. Uh, tell us more about it and how uh, it, it has a role in handling sensitive data. Excellent. So zero trust security um, or zero trust security framework is actually more of a concept. Okay. It's not a compliance checklist. It's been around for maybe 14, 15 years. Uh, it was actually created by uh, a gentleman called John Kindervag from Forrester a long time ago. But it took more than a decade for zero trust to start bubbling up to the surface because, you know, organizations had invested in traditional legacy cybersecurity tools for the last three, four decades, and they'd spent millions on putting this defense in depth, multi-layered security in place, which is still very, very relevant and important security. But, you know, environments have changed, working habits have changed, there's been an explosion of data, and now, what used to be called the perimeter, where everything behind the perimeter was supposed to be trusted and everything outside the perimeter was untrusted. This entire dynamic has changed because with the advent of remote working with the pandemic, cloud adoption, digital transformation, data is constantly flowing in and out of the corporate perimeter. So that perimeter that used to be securing the company is now everywhere the data is. And so that extended perimeter is now uh, requiring you to change the way you think about security. And the security needs to follow the data. We call this data-centric security. And so Zero Trust is really about, you know, having that security follow the data and putting controls around the data no matter where it goes. And unfortunately, the old environments and the old security architectures that did not think about Zero Trust, they're the ones today that tend to get compromised by attackers you know, and uh, because these attackers are coming in, they're compromising someone's credentials, they're entering the environment and they're moving from one device to the other and moving laterally because of the old perimeter-based security. Now, as you move to Zero Trust, that entire dimension changes where, you know, you, it's the, the, the phrase in Zero Trust is never trust, always verify. The nicer way to put it is trust, but verify. But in all cases, it means that you don't assume anything is trustworthy anymore. You have to validate the user, the device, the access, you know, to, to ensure it's genuine before you grant it access. And so this is kind of the new world of cybersecurity and Zero Trust is very much a fundamental part of that new world. So our job is really to be the educator, the evangelist, uh, create awareness around Zero Trust. And um, yeah, it's, 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 it's resonating in people's minds and a lot of people are asking, you know, where do we start on this Zero Trust journey? Uh, what are the steps of this journey? So we're kind of helping them through that process. Being a service provider in this field and knowing that it, it's growing at the speed of something really fast. Sure. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, how are you keeping up with the requirements of the, the, the field? I mean, um, the attackers are changing in, in their, their forms and 
the service provider needs to continuously upgrade their uh, approaches. What is it like? What are your challenges at this point? I, I, excellent question. You know, uh, the reason that cybersecurity is growing at such a rapid pace is because defenders are constantly trying to play catch up to the attackers, right? And attackers are innovating faster than defenders. And so our job as a cybersecurity advisor and value added distribution company uh, is to constantly be on the lookout for kind of the, the innovative new cybersecurity vendors that are able to protect against modern attacks or today's zero day attacks, right? And so CyberNight is trying to keep our fingers on the pulse of the industry by, you know, visiting conferences like Mina ISC, you know, listening to the thought leadership from key speakers to help guide and shape, you know, what's coming and what's existing and what the state of the landscape is. Uh, and that's how we constantly stay abreast of what the latest uh, challenges are, but more than challenges, also the vendors that are operating in the space. So we're always looking at evolving our portfolio. It's a never ending proposition, right? We're not necessarily looking at adding new vendors all the time, but we're keeping our finger on the pulse. And we like to stay focused with our vendors and go deep with, the, with our vendors, but we have to stay on top of what the industry is talking about. Avinash, hopefully you'll be with us next year in the ISA, ISC conference, but tell me, what are you looking forward to portraying next year? What is the change or the development that you are looking forward to? It, okay, so first of all, we will definitely be here again, not, not hopefully. Um, in regard, so let me turn this question back to you just for a second. So when you say development and what are we looking for at the conference or in, uh, as, as a company? Uh, in the field. In the field of cybersecurity. I mean, I think that's a very <laughs> challenging question to answer. Um, I think that, um, you know, as we start, what we are already seeing the change that we want is what we are already seeing happen, right? The enterprise and government organizations in the kingdom and around the region are becoming more and more mature from a cybersecurity perspective. You know, one thing that we are seeing happen very rampantly is this cloud adoption. Now, cloud has been adopted in the West and, and other countries for many, many years now, in 10, 15 years. But here in Saudi and in the region, it's coming very, very quickly. So I think it will be very exciting to see how the cloud adoption you know, plays out. And of course, a lot of that has to do with data residency, data privacy, data regulations, um, uh, data sovereignty, and the local clouds that are being deployed. I would love to see the cybersecurity vendors, our vendors and other cybersecurity vendors participate in these local clouds. This is a challenge that, you know, I think a lot of um, uh, customers and value added distributors suffer from. They want to go and work with many of these great cybersecurity vendors, but these are cloud delivered vendors or, or, or cloud enabled vendors that need cloud access or cloud capability. But because their clouds are sitting outside the kingdom or in the region, it doesn't help the cause because we are regulated to ensure that the data stays within the kingdom. And so the new clouds that are coming and are already here, frankly, if the vendors start to leverage on these local clouds and be able to provide their capabilities locally, that'll be a game changer for the industry. So I'm hoping that's going to come soon. We'll see. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I think it will. Amazing, amazing. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for giving us the chance to interview you. And we're looking forward to your speech tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.